We are the paradoxical ape. Bipedal, naked, large-brained. Long the master of fire, tools, and language, but still trying to understand ourselves. Aware that death is inevitable, yet filled with optimism. We grow up slowly. We hand down knowledge. We empathize and deceive. We shape the future from our shared understanding of the past. Carta brings together experts from diverse disciplines to exchange insights on who we are and how we got here. An exploration made possible by the generosity of humans like you. Thank you very much. It's a great privilege to share my opinion on the, this special topic, because in the last few years, you might have heard repeatedly about claims made the earliest of this, the earliest of this. But my discussion is going to be focusing on the earliest homo sapien claims by, by people, by different researchers. Assessing claims of the earliest Homo sapiens needs first to evaluate a series of recent discoveries and interpretations that figure prominently in any current understanding of Pleistocene human evolution. For this, we need to have the geochronological position of the fossils securely determined. Whenever somebody says that he found the earliest Homo sapien, the first thing that you, we have to see is whether the dating was properly done. The geochronology is really there. Then after that, what we have to do is according to La Cruz et al., the modern human face is distinct. That means what we have to do first is we have to define what we are trying to say the earliest whatever homo sapien. How do we define homo sapien? Just you know, to use the recent literature, according to La Cruz et al, 2019, the modern human face is distinct from that of the earliest hominid species in several important ways, including the following. One, it is relatively small, the face is relatively small, and then projecting, as you can see it. The face is very, very small. High, you know, big head, but small face. Second, it shows a depression, what we call the canine fossa. This is the depression. Especially the modern human face has this special depression. Okay? Below the orbit. Third thing, I'm trying to limit my, my description of Homo sapiens. Just using certain features, and we try to evaluate. We can, we, we can use a whole suite of morphology or features, but for, for the purpose of my talk, I want to limit it just to the face and small, small regions. It lacks a pronounced supraorbital torus. What we call the supraorbital is just the eyebrow region. Homo sapiens, like us, don't have a huge brow ridge above our eyes. These features do not appear all at once in the fossil record, but crucial elements are already in place among the earliest representatives of Homo sapien lineages. This presentation will focus on the hominid fossils I'm using hominids just only for those who are bipedal. My hominid definition does not include chimps and gorillas. 
I'm talking only about the bipedal ones. Okay? Because the recent classification used hominin. I'm not using hominin, I'm using hominid. Hominid is bipedal for me. Okay? This presentation will focus on, the, on those hominid fossils in, Afri in Africa ranging between 1 million years and 150,000 million years, uh, thousand years. The reason why I do that is, one, they have to be, they have to have good stratigraphic hygiene. I use the word hygiene because usually it is, it's a mess. They have to be clean. You have to know exactly where they came from. This is a word I borrowed from Miller 2008, which is a very important word. And the other thing is a reasonably acceptable age estimate. Because the age range of some of the fossils that we are dealing with these days is just enormous. But we prefer a certain age. Sometimes we prefer. It's not because that it's, it, it's, that's the age that is the preferred age, which is scientifically unacceptable. Third, complete enough to make a morphological observation to assess their taxonomic affinity. So there are so many fragments of bones, of you know, hominid bones, ranging between 1 million years and 150,000 years. But most of them are just bits and pieces. So to make this assessment, I really want to use only those who, who do have mostly face, face included, and the other parts. So when, when, you, when I choose that, there are so few in Africa, very few. I used as a base, as a one million base level, I used the fossil that my colleagues and myself found from Mirlawash, Dhaka, because I am 100% sure about its stra stratigraphic hygiene. It is clearly found from one million years ago based on argon-argon dates, and the stratigraphy is clearly labeled. So with this, is, with this understanding between one million and 150,000 years ago, Within the lineage in Africa, in the African landscape, there were hominids that evolved from Homo erectus, or whatever you call Homo erectus. Some people prefer that. There are hominids of the, of the lineage. These different populations of hominids evolved incrementally through time. Incrementally through time. That means they add features every time adding features that lead towards homo sapiens. The advanced features may not be manifested in all populations at once, but the homo sapien, thought homo sapienization of the lineage has continued through time. So I, I, I see the, uh, the lineage it's not, didn't appear, meaning the, 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 the homo sapien package did not appear at once. It is a process. It, it, it increases characters through time. That's what I see in the fossil record. Then my base, the, the top, is what I used is Homo sapien adulto. This is another one which I'm 100% sure about its stratigraphic hygiene, which is 150, between 150 and 160,000 years boundary, and the age is undisputable. So the morphology, it has a clear homo sapien morphology, which we'll go through it later. So the homo sapien lineage may have originated around 500,000 years ago or earlier. So using this, their features, the hominids may be treated in three groups or stages, early, middle, and late stage. This is an arbitrary boundary that I, I try to break them. The earliest, from the complete ones, which is part of the face, 
which is the morphological feature that we uh, that were manifested early in the lineage is from Elan's Fontaine, Saldana. The age between 700 to 400,000 years ago, based on fauna, recently, recent uh, fauna work suggested older than 600,000, maybe from 600 to 1 million. Brow Ridge is, this is what we call the Brow Ridge. The Brow Ridge is very thick and undifferentiated. Undifferentiated means in Homo sapiens, the middle part, which we call the superciliary part, is a little bit thick, and the lateral part is thin. But in Lance Fontaine or Saldana, it's thick medial laterally, which is a very primitive feature. The occipital torus is not strong, and that is common to all Africans. African, even African Homo erectus, they all have similar kind of, so we cannot use it. But what else do we use? The frontal is less constricted. This is the beginning of Homo sapienization. The frontal part, this part, is not constricted. In the earlier parts, in the earlier groups in Homo erectus, this is, this, the lateral part of the most lateral edge of the brow ridge is very wide compared to the frontal. But in this, in Lance Fontaine, the frontal is not very constricted. It's even less constricted even than that of Broken Hill. This feature is more advanced than Homo erectus. This is a beginning. And the cranial capacity is 1,250 cc. It's much bigger than Homo erectus. Much bigger than Homo erectus. That means brain expansion has started. This is a trend going towards Homo sapiens. Okay, then the associated tools, still Achillean. That is the kind of tools that we have been seeing with Homo erectus. Let's go to the next group. This is Bodo. Bodo is a skull found in the Middle Awash, in the area that I have work with, I have been working in the last 30 years. Age, 600,000, based on Argonardon dating. Cranial capacity is exactly the same as Elan's Fontaine or Saldana. 1,250 cc, much bigger than Homo erectus. The Homo erectus is under 1,000 cc. That means the brain has started expanding. Expanding, which is a direction that we see going towards Homo sapiens. High and arched temporal scoma. When you see this, this region, in Homo erectus, it's like, it forms like almost like a straight line. But in these guys, it forms like an arch. It's an ad an advanced morphology. Supraorbital torus differentiated, meaning the lateral part is thin and the medial part is thick. This is a kind of morphology that we see in Homo sapiens. So that means it's, they are adding morphology to, you know, going towards Homo sapiens. The associated tools are Acheulean, like Homo erectus but the morphology is changing. Unfortunately, the, the occipital part is not preserved. What about broken hair? Age, unknown, we don't know. Klein correlated the fauna of Old Dubai, upper bed two through bed four. That age range is between 1.78 to 490,000. You can put it anywhere. So, but the temporal scoma is arched, like, like Bodo. It's an advanced homo sapien kind, homo sapienization that we see. The upper scale of the occipital, which is this one, is relative to the lower scale, is big. That is also an advanced feature. Frontal is transversally expanded. This is what we call the frontal. Unfortunately, it's still primitive because it doesn't have a forehead. We have a forehead, which makes us different from Homo erectus. But this guy, even though it has a big brain, but no frontal yet, but still 
transversely expanded. It's big. It's a homo sapienization that we call. A cranial capacity is a little bit bigger than Bodo and Saldana. Now you can see the brain keeps expanding. The other features are not there. What about Ndutu from Tanzania, from Ndutu beds? Age estimates, about 400,000 years old. See discussion in Millard, there are so many discussions about the age, but about the age range is about 400,000. What is important about this is cranial capacity, and so it is small, maybe a, f a female, because there is a sexual dimorphism between males and females, one 1,100 cc, it looks smaller than Bodo, Broken Hill, and Saldana, but it has more homo sapien features than them. The occipital is not flexed, you can see it from here. It's an open occipital. In Homo erectus, it is flexed, but this one is really open. Especially the backside is almost vertical. Has a post canine fossa, something that we have never seen before either in Bodo, Saldana, or Broken Hill. It is this part. We Homo sapiens have a depression right here, which we called the post canine fossa. That is a Homo sapien character at that stage. The associative tools, still Acheulean. So the brain size is much more than Homo erectus. The occipital has changed towards Homo, sapi homo sapiens, Vertical occipital, so the upper scale. Canine fossa, the most important part is developed. And, and the torus is still thick. It shows a little bit of differentiation, but still the lateral part is very thick. It's a mosaic evolution that we, we see in these groups. What about LH18, Nigaloba? Again, from Tanzania, from the Nigaloba beds. The age. Hey, 1987 reported age of the fossil for LH18 in the marker tough, probably greater than 129,000 to greater 132,000, certainly less than 990,000. Millard, 2008, reported an age less than 490,000. Now you can see how messy the dating is. My assumption is an age of 400,000, this is just an assumption, maybe an age of 400,000 may be acceptable. Cranial capacity, 1,367. It's big cranial capacity. Occipital, you can see the back of the skull, open with no torus. That is also an advanced feature. post fossa is visible. Like the one I showed you in Ndutu, it has a post canine fossa, which is also present in modern Homo sapiens, like us. Okay, what about Florspad from South Africa? Based on ESR dates, the age's best estimate is 329 to about 189,000 years, similar in 2008. Has a canine fossa, look at this. This depression is called the canine fossa. Short face, typical for Homo sapiens, but the earlier forms, especially like Knigaloba, the face is still big, even though it has canine fossa. That means everything did not come together. Everything did not come together. Okay, the frontal is very steep, has developed a frontal, steep frontal, a forehead. The anterior surface of the zygomatic forms 90 degrees. This one is 90 degrees. That is typical Homo sapien. What about Jebel Urhard? Long and low cranium, continuously thick brow ridge. These are primitive morphologies. Cranial capacity is 1,450 cc. It's more than average, even for modern humans. <laughs> you know? <laughs> OK. Convex frontal, but still low. Convex frontal, still low. Brow ridge is thick mediolaterally, which is very primitive. Occipital, moderately angled. Short face. The anterior surface of the zygomatic forms 90 degrees, which is typical Homo sapien. 
the dates of Jabal Irhad evolved from it's an evolution of dates, now you can see. When it, when it was first published, it was 40,000 years old, 1968. Then 160,000 in 1991, and 300,000 in 2017. This is the evolution of dates. I suggest to redate other sites like Florsbad and others for whatever words it may be. If we re redate, they may also evolve in that direction. What about Omo? The Omo Kibish skulls, there are two different kinds of skulls. This is Omo 1, and this one is Omo 2. Omo 1 is very advanced. Typical Homo sapien, steep frontal, morphology, very Homo sapien-like. Omo 2 is very archaic in occipital and frontal profile. They may not belong to the same group of evolutionary status. Omo 2 is less advanced and may belong to ancestral lineage of Omo 1. It may belong to a different contemporary, pop con contemporary populations. It may, if they, if they are from the same horizon. Based on taphonomic evidence, they may not be contemporaneous. Even though they are published as to be as contemporaneous, for interpretation, it's misleading. If, they, if, we, if we can confirm it, yeah, it's, a, it's an evidence by itself for two different populations, one advanced population, the other primitive population to live side by side. But based on our observation, Omo 2 is very, very primitive. You can see it's an isolated surface find, no associated archaeology like Omo 1. Cranium is low and massive, very low. You can see the, the frontal is very flat and the occipital is very flexed, unlike OMO1. Frontal is low, weakly killed, a strongly angled occipital. Cranial capacity is very big, typical Homo sapien type. Broad and constricted frontal. Parietal is bulged and expanded. And it was a surface find, not associated stone tools. So we think, based on this evidence that we observed on the fossil, Notes, the polished, eroded supraorbitals. They are polished and eroded. And the polish is also on the temporal surface. They are highly polished. So these features may suggest hydraulic transportation of the skull by Paleo Omo River or its tributaries. So I think they are not contemporaneous. And this is a very good information to take into consideration. Hair toe, let's see. Small face, tucked under the brain case. Small face, tucked under the brain case. No projecting mid face, the mid face not projecting. It's only the lower part of the face looks a little bit projection. It's a very, you know, kind of primitive character. Anterior surface of the zygomatic, this area, forms a vertical orientation. This vertical orientation, typical homo, homo sapien, has a post canine fossa, that is something you have seen, Nudutu, and Flores bud, and Jebel your heart. Okay? Inferior border of zygomatic joints, 90 degrees, typical of homo sapien. A steep frontal, that is major mark of homo sapiens, steep frontal. Brow ridge is differentiated into medial and lateral. The lateral part is thin, and the medial part is thick. It's typical of Homo sapiens. Occipital is open and flexed. Long vault, but still has some primitive characters. So what do we learn from the Middle Pleistocene fossil record in Africa? The Homo sapiens lineage emerged early, maybe by 500,000 years ago. And earlier groups between 500,000 and 1 million years ago, Dhaka and Buya, between those times, may represent the last common ancestor with the Neanderthals. The change observers through time includes brain expansion that we have seen from Saldana time, parietal bulging, as we observed also at Saldana time, occipital less flexed, that is, that we have seen in, at least by uh, Broken Hill. Facial profile advanced and small, and smaller, that is what we see next by Nudutu time. Brain getting bigger and frontal keeps 
frontal convex but still low, that is what we see in Jebel Hard, brow ridge reducing, occipital more open. A steep frontal, a smaller face, that is a third stage that we have seen. This is what we see in Idalto and still with some primitive features. Then, when we go, the first stage, there is one stage, that's the brain expansion that we have started in the earlier parts, and the second stage, then we have seen a little bit of facial change, like the first emergence of the facial morphology developing post canine fossa, and the third stage, superior expansion and lateral part of the uh, brow ridge thinning. This is the sequence that we have seen through time. Then, at which stage of the lineage do we claim the earliest Homo sapiens status for a hominid? It's unfortunate. We use that terminology, and I think it is misleading. So, it is an arbitrary term that we use the earliest, and the easiest thing to do is we find a Homo sapien at 160,000, we find a Homo sapien at 400,000, but the earliest is a misleading terminology, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you.